Hi, this is Arlo Leach, and I'm going to walk you through the biggest changes and new features added to Bandhelper this month. This is version 4.3 for iOS and macOS, and version 3.3 for Android. If you're a Setlist Maker user, many of these changes are available in version 6.3 for iOS and macOS, and version 3.3 for Android. If you're using a tablet or a computer, the first thing you'll notice when you open your account is that the shortcuts have been moved from the navigation on the left to the main view on the right. This is simply a better use of space on larger devices. The logic for which shortcuts are displayed is the same. Upcoming items like events and checklists appear automatically, and you can control the number that appear from the Settings Appearance page. And you can manually add undated items like set lists or stage plots by clicking the star icons in those lists. Remember that to see all your data, or edit your data, you'll need to go into a module and view one of the lists. But in many cases, all you need is a shortcut to quickly view an upcoming or favorite item. Continuing with the graphic design updates, the calendar page has gotten a refresh, as has the totals page in the finance module. On devices with iOS 14 and later, date pickers, like on the transaction edit page, have this new calendar style. When viewing a set list, the selected song now has this highlight color on the left edge, making it easier to see. And for the first time, if you're viewing a break or pause, that will be highlighted in the song list too. Most of the focus in this update is on song layouts here in the set list view. First, the buttons that used to be on the left side of the bottom toolbar have been moved to the middle of the top toolbar. This leaves more room for the text fields in the bottom toolbar, and also makes it easier to hide the bottom toolbar by removing those text fields if you want to give more room to your song list or lyrics. And hopefully this change will make the features accessed from these buttons easier for new users to find. Some of these buttons have new icons, so let's go through those briefly. First, this little box divided into smaller boxes represents a layout, and you can use this to quickly switch between layouts. Next is the same icon with a pencil added, and you can use that to edit the current layout. Next is a musical note icon with a pencil, and you can use that to edit the current song. The musical note with a plus is the quick add button. You can use that if you want to take a request or quickly insert a song into your set list during a performance. And the musical note with a question mark is the random song icon, which jumps to a random song in your set list. I like using that one for jams. If some of these buttons aren't visible, you can edit your layout and add them. Or, if there are some that are visible and you don't want to use, you can edit your layout and remove them. We'll look at that a little bit later. For now, let's go back to the Switch Layout button. And you might notice that the layouts listed here have some new names. I'm always trying to find names that help people quickly understand the best use for each layout. So new installations will have some updated names. Full Screen Lyrics, instead of Big Set List and more buttons instead of big lyrics. If you want to avoid confusion when talking to other users or reading the documentation, you can go now to Help, Utilities, and click Rename Default Layouts. This won't change your layouts, it will only update their names to match new installations. New installations also get two new default layouts. Overlapping buttons stretches the document viewer across the whole screen, except the top toolbar, and then it places a couple buttons on top of the document viewer. This is a great alternative if you like using full screen lyrics, but also need access to a couple buttons. And Big Fields is kind of like the split view layout, but instead of showing a partial screen document viewer on the right side, it shows some info about the current song in big fields that are easy to see from across the stage. Then if you click the document button, a full screen document viewer opens on top of that. If you have an older installation and want to try these new layouts, you can go to Help, Utilities, and click Load Default Layouts. This won't change your existing layouts, it will only add the new ones that you don't already have. Speaking of adding layouts, the number of layouts in your account can often feel confusing or redundant. That's because layouts are specific to a device's screen size, so a band with five different kinds of devices will end up with five sets of layouts in their account. But in this version, the main layouts list in the repertoire module has been reorganized to make more sense of this. You'll now see only the layouts sized for your device in the top section, 
with a divider between the landscape and portrait layouts. Next, you'll see a section of layouts available to you but sized for other devices. If you have a tablet and a phone and you're looking at your tablet, you'll see your phone layouts here. Finally, you'll see a section of layouts in your account but assigned only to other users. So you can basically ignore these unless you want to copy or share someone else's layout. Each of these sections is now sorted by name instead of sort order, and each layout shows the device it was created on and its size to help understand where all these layouts are coming from. Now let's say you've set up a layout that you really like on one device, and now you want to use it on a different device that doesn't have exactly the same screen size. You can find that layout in the Other Devices section and click it, then click Edit Details. You could turn on the Scalable option, and that will make the layout available on any device regardless of screen size. But to optimize it for your current device, you can click the new button that says Copy for this device. This button lets you copy the contents of that layout into a new layout sized for this device. And then you can edit the layout to tweak the size and position of the items. But the collection of items and other settings like layout actions will be added for you automatically. When you do edit the layout, you'll see that instead of a single Edit Layout option, we now have separate options to edit different types of items in the layout. Edit Song List, Edit Buttons and Fields, Edit Document Viewer, and Edit Backgrounds. Many of these elements can be layered on top of each other, and separating the editing into those four groups makes this much easier. For example, I'll click Edit Backgrounds to add a background box. and then click Edit Buttons and Fields to reposition my buttons on top of it. That was a lot trickier when all the layout elements were edited together. We have some other new tools to make editing easier. If you select a group of items, you can click the Options button for the group, and then click Align Centers to line them up neatly. Similarly, you can click Space Equally to space them out consistently between the first and last item. Both of these features work either with horizontal or vertical arrangements of items. If you have resized some items and it bothers you that the sizes you ended up with aren't consistent, you can select them all and click Apply Average Size. And finally, if you want to resize multiple items, you can select them all, then drag the group and they will all be resized by the same amount. All these options are available whether you edit a layout here from the full layouts list or in the set list view from the edit layout button at the top of the screen. Now I mentioned that you can customize which buttons appear up here. We can do that by clicking edit details and then changing the options under top toolbar buttons. And now we can see a new option called Jump to Section. This adds a new button that lets you jump to any set in your set list. This is especially useful for smart lists. And when this button is active, the shortcuts along the side of the song list are hidden to save space, and you can use the Jump button instead. To bring the shortcuts back, you can hide the Jump button. There are also a couple new options for the document viewer, which apply only to lyrics, not documents. First, if you've placed markers into your lyrics to jump between sections, you now have the option to hide sections other than the current one. So here's what the lyrics look like normally. And then if we edit the document viewer, click its Options button, and turn on Hide Other Lyrics Sections, we see only one section at a time. This can make it easier to focus on the current verse or chorus. Another new option is Wrap Lyrics Lines, which is on by default, but if we turn it off, we can increase the lyric size and the lyrics will go off the edge of the screen instead of wrapping. This is useful if you want to make your text much larger, but you only need the first few words of each line to remember the lyrics. One more thing about the Document Viewer is that the capabilities for switching to full screen documents or lyrics are changing. 
If you're using a layout like this where the document viewer only uses part of the screen, the ability to switch from here to full screen will go away in a future version. But you can still open full screen documents or lyrics from any layout that doesn't initially show them at a smaller size. In other words, full screen isn't going away, but switching between two sizes within a single layout is going away. I made a separate video about this called Changes to Full Screen Documents that you can look up if you want to know more about that. Okay, I'm going to take a detour here and undo the changes I just made to this layout. This blue bar is distracting me. I'll go back to Settings, Account Sync, and click Rollback. Then I'll scroll down and find the first change I made today to the Items field of the Split View layout. Select that and click Continue. Now we can go back to that layout. Ah, that's better. There are just a few more small updates I want to show you here. A common request is to support Chord Pro positioning with proportional fonts, and that's now available automatically. Here I'm showing Chord Pro chords with a monospace font. But I can go to the settings and change to a proportional font and go back, and the positioning still works. In most cases, this lets you make the text larger without wrapping. Another common request is to sort lists from present to future instead of from future to present. This only really works if you are hiding past events, but that's now an option on any list that shows dated items, like the events list in the schedule module. We can click the search button in the top toolbar, turn on the future filter to hide past events, then change the sort direction to ascending. With these options, it's no longer necessary to archive old set lists into folders, so that folder archiving is now gone, and instead you can do the same thing to show only future and undated set lists and sort ascending. Without the archive folders, it's easier to look up old set lists if needed. If you're building a smart list based on a date range, date values are now relative. So instead of showing, for example, songs last performed before a certain date, you can show songs last performed more than 12 months ago, and then the contents will update automatically over time. On the Song Edit page, the Time Signature field is now used as more than just a reference. If you enter a compound time signature, like 6-8, it will automatically add subdivisions when playing the tempo. And on the MIDI Device Edit page, we now have a Notes field that you can use for anything you want. And the same on the MIDI Preset Edit page. and the MIDI preset notes are searchable from the list. There are a few more updates I didn't mention here, and almost 40 bug fixes, so as always you can read the release notes on the Bandhelper website for the complete details. But these are the big ones. Enjoy!